All right, stream start time. <laughs> I am here on time because I want to play more of this game. <laughs> uh, this, all like for the past couple of days that I was that I was off, I've j I'm just constantly thinking about this game and where it could go. <laughs> it's so well done. So, um, just to to recap. I am a detective, or a, I'm a cop in some kind of weird dystopian, maybe not dystopian, post a, I don't know, alternate, weird, weird world. Uh, I have amnesia, I'm a raging alcoholic and drug abuser, I think. We, we just, just touched lightly touched the surface of his his past and the fact that there was somebody uh that he loved that either left him or died and that he is in anguish over that like that seems like more than more than the mystery of like who killed the the guy who's hanging in the tree it's strange i wonder if that's going to be the only like, is the game going to end with us solving that murder? Or are there going to be a bunch of different cases? Or are the cases going to wind up not mattering at all? Because it's going to be this big investigation of who he is. And what happened to him. <clears throat> um, I also realized, uh, upon re-watching... Sunday's stream realize that there is a button right here. That's how you use your um your heal. Cuz there was the one death that I had where apparently after you lose um you know um lose your last hit point, you have an opportunity to save yourself and I thought I needed to go into inventory, but it's just this button right here. The same thing over here. Also, I I just sort of like, at the time, just sort of like, oh, that's weird, and kind of forgot about it. And then again, on rewatching the stream, was hit by the the fact that he said when our character, whose name I guess might be Harry, um, he says something about investigating like serial killer oh what if there's a sequence killer and Kim says I can guarantee you that there are no sequence killings going on and I for some reason that kind of hit me and I was like is there something else going on here like is this is this like a purgatory like he's already dead and this is some kind of like purgatory or dream or the whole game is a metaphor for him doing something alright so we had some things to do Let's review our tasks. Uh, we need to sing karaoke in the evening, but I need to get, I need to find the, uh, the sad song in order to do that. Oh, we've got an officer profile that's going to show up over here later. Uh, inspect the victim's body. This is a preliminary inspection. You just need to suppress the urge to throw up and approach it. Okay, so I, I guess I didn't quite get that before. There was, um, the, it was like, take your hand away from your nose without throwing up. But, uh, apparently you can probably just fail that, maybe? Or maybe I need to get a, uh, maybe that's it. Maybe I need to get, like, a, a handkerchief or something to put over my nose. We'll see. <laughs> get a reality lowdown. You have no idea where you are. Ask others to explain the world to you in rich detail, or in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich pe person. Rich people are educated. Who made the call? Oh, I, alright, I've forgotten about this, so it's good that I reviewed. Sylphie did not make the call. Sylvie. Reporting the body. Somebody else did. I do have to get back on the radio, and we might do that first to, um... <laughs> Try.
track down your badge. It's unclear how you should go about finding a tiny piece of plastic in a world as huge as this. Maybe you'll just stumble across it down the line. Miracles happen. Find any information. I might have pawned it, right? Find out who is in the Union box. An unruly men gather in the mess hall. The whirling and rags are not there today, but most likely they'll eventually show up to keep an eye out for them. Piss and competition. After we've inspected the body, he will talk about the relationship between Princess 41 and 57. Who put the clothes in the trash? We should try to ask Kuno and Gart. Read your ledger and name the case. This case needs an official name. Go to your inventory and interact with the damaged lever ledger to give it one. Finding the right line may take some time. And read the watermarks. This may yield some information about who you are. You should finish this game? You should. I, I am blown away by how good this is, even though I'm only a few hours in. It's also kind of reminding me that I never finished L.A. Noir, but that was that was nowhere near this. <laughs> uh, Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? He turns the preheater on, waits, then takes out his keys and says, "All right, ready." I turn. You press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious carriage. Oh, and this, that was, that was the noise that begins the game. Where we, we made mention of that before. That him pulling up in the car was what made us wake up out of our drunken stupor. The dashboard lights up with an orange glow. Rounds, rounds per minute gauges jump. And the engine of the Kupri Kinema comes to life with a whiny growl. What stats did I go with? Uh, I went with 3315. And I had my first... Uh, started out with visual calculus, and then I've only leveled up once, and I put that in perception. And I'm kind of... It's interest... I mean, everything about this game is interesting. <clears throat> It's interesting to me that there are... Having some of these too high, and it even it even does say that in descriptions, having them too high may actually be, like, a... Not a, not a drawback, but that you can't really assume that having this, that having this particular thing jump in and say, hey, hey, here's, here's what, here's what I say you should do. That that doesn't... It's not It's not like Fallout, where you're like, Hey, if my, if my pickpocket skill is really high, there's no downside to that. <laughs> right? <laughs> like a leopard waking from its sleep, yawning and roaring at the same time. The lights unfold with a little click. Casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachal West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of the reg ver Revachol. I can never say that name right, and I'm probably still not saying it right. I'm going to call it Revachol, though. Are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanima's headlights. Wait, look around you. 
A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears among the stopped lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez, he smells the air and says, Where are we on this? Let me see. Right here, he says, his finger near the top of the map. A segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. Uh, text size? Um, seems okay for me, I think. Yeah, I'm fine with the text. I could make it larger, but no, it's fine. <laughs> Seems nice. No, it does not, <laughs> the lieutenant says without optimism. Perforations. There are many of them. They're divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. What about the next one? The next one is the longest. It runs all the way around the border and then some. There's so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. What about the ra last row? The last row has three perforations. As you look at them, you feel your index finger reflexively contract three times. Seems like something I've done before. And something you'll do again before this is all over. Hey, Kim, what, are the, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They're your statistics, as it were. Should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years? Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? I've walked the land, <laughs> telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. <laughs> 18 years I've done this? <laughs> That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? <laughs> I feel like I just went around and uh, No, here we go. <laughs> cool, I'm glad you joined us. Not a lot of money in Doom Crying. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> this next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. I would have thought there'd be more. It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. I don't think I can ever re-become this person. What's the last number? You know the answer already. The tingle in your index finger gave it away. Those are my confirmed kills. Three of them. That's right. How did you know? Just a lucky guess. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the, the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather... tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones, so we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes, he says, declining to elaborate. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping, some more effective or self-destructive than others. It gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should find a hobby. Will this become a task? <laughs> Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves! <laughs> he points to my gardening gloves! It's meant in earnest. Hmm. I like these these are also these are so good. These are so so good. The fact that that in this conversation alone there've probably been four or five skill roles that that I could have succeeded at but didn't that would have popped up as little like hey, here's this thing, here's that thing. Maybe I should pour one out for the boys, the fallen. If you want to pour out the booze you've been carrying around on duty, I'm certainly not going to stop you. 
Actually, I'm just going to hold on to this. Very noble of you. Press the remote control on the key. Okay. You can now see your statistics on the journal page. Name unknown. Rank unknown. Huh. What? So, those... Hmm. So, the answers that I was giving were actually kind of shaping what what they, you know... What kind of cop I am. That's very interesting. I mean, of course it's being tallied. I, I have to assume that everything is being counted and tallied in this game. <laughs> but it still surprises me. I guess it also surprises me that they're telling me. Right, yeah. I've been just kind of picking things at random. I definitely don't have it. Maybe maybe like the next time or the third time or the fourth time I play this, I'll, I'll have some character in mind instead of just pushing whatever button. <clears throat> A good character builder for D&D. <laughs> Uh, so what was the other thing I was going to do soon? Let me, um... Wasn't there a... Wasn't there a thing. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> A cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the back. It's just toilet paper. Sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You, clipboard. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. Perception, smell. It's not, though. It's toilet paper. Leave it there. It's cool. Cool toilet paper. I mean, kitchen tissue. <laughs> it says, everyone look at me and my kitchen tissue covered cop lever. Ledger. I don't care. My letter is droopy and smells like a urinal. Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink es escapes into the watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What's in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are the handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention, but there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases. Undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. What do you mean, is that all? Inspect the handwriting. This was, this was a difficult role that I made, uh, recognizing my own handwriting. It's, inor it's inornate, nearly illegible, yet marching in orderly lines. Pedagogical somehow. Brash. It must be yours for you to be able to read it. These are the lines of someone who has written by hand a lot and has developed a style only they themselves, or you yourself, can decipher. Your hand cramps up merely looking at the scribbles, drawn, as by some magnet, to the red checkered margins, fast, but always straight. 
a naming convention. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins, yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say, even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop staple, show staples. They're written in capital letters, too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, The Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, The Unsolvable Case. Others appear more lighthearted. The guy's on a couch in an unexpected location. And The Murder at the Hookah Parlor. And even the rare, article-free, collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done later, once you're done inspecting them up close. <clears throat> Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time for arrival on the scene? <laughs> no, I mean a non-numeric one, with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I have the option to not mention it. No, I will mention it. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one, he peeks into his notes, the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spike through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms... I, oh, I'm going to use my monkey pen. <laughs> Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Not yet. Not quite yet. The notebook is annual. It says 51 on what remains of its cover. A molten scrap. Molten strap. <laughs> Not scrap. Molten strap of cardboard. Everything prior to this must have belonged to a previous volume. In short, there was more. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? He raises his nose from his notes. Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Appears to have been my load. I'm not sure I completed them, though. That's a lot. This kind of caseload would explain your solved cases tally on your watermark. He stops. I didn't mean to say you're making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. No. I burned out all right. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of gills, the checkered papers dry in your hand. Oh, that's the only thing. Okay. Mmm... Shall I shall I name this case? I don't know enough about it yet. Hmm. Let's browse the yellow papers. In the back you see thin translucent copier paper, some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out according to type of form. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Misconduct fine. A monetary penalty ranging from 20 to 50 real. Several cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. Station call. These are quite sinister in tone. 
They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. All in a print so small it could be considered downright cute. Failed autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Yeah, so all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. This, the rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copier paper. I'm gonna try this. No. It's possible, yes. Easy, no. You need to come up with a small archaeological system to reorder the remains of your past works. At the moment, all they do is fall apart in your hands. Some dates and the numerical titular system is all you have. All right, so I will someday be able to... Yeah, if I put a skill point in logic, I can try that again. Or it may be just even talking to him and asking him something. I shall smell the ledger. The acidic stench of rotting food has rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by the faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. You know, like the bits they put into public piss bowls, probably called Fermi Discreet or Axel or something. At this point in, in its journey, the ledger has seen the inside of a public toilet. <laughs> Shut up, nose! I don't need your help. I don't need anyone's help. Your nose does not understand what it did wrong. <laughs> oh, dare I dare I look in the hidden drawer again? Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment <laughs> is now open. Inside you see two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. It's slightly, ever so slightly, difficult to breathe once you've done so. The drawer is locked. Blue ink drips from the white pages in your hand. Let me look at the case files again. Is there anything else? All right. Hmm. What next? Let's go back inside and talk to uh, Gart. I had a couple questions for him. I think. Need to pass the time by a book. Reading passes time quickly. That was a person. I don't think he was here before. Bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? <laughs> Pretty long. It's drink o'clock. boy. It's coming back to him. You had your Mesolimbic reward pathway worried there. Not thinking about drinking all that time. It was like you weren't yourself. Not to mention, I do need rum and lemonade. Rum and lemonade, would that be good? Probably not. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost two in the afternoon. Sure. Forget about the bar. Or don't forget it, but <laughs> you should totally try to get a drink there too. But first, you should lick that stain off the counter. Let's get wild. Lick it. <laughs> but only a no, don't like it. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. New task: find booze and drink it. That's a task. I, I have. <laughs> the hangover feels really bad. You have to take the edge off. Find a bottle, bottle of alcohol, hand, put it in your hand, and the magic will happen on its own. I, I do have that ah okay so 
Right. So you lose a hit point, but you actually do get temporarily or permanently a a physique point. Hmm. I got drugs in case I need them. Maybe we shall drink it. Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's when the magic happens. Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore Red. The gods have been generous. they pop it open before they change their minds. Wow. <laughs> the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. A child could have done it. Yeah, sure. There's a satisfying pop as the cork jumps out, and the hair on the back on your back rises like an army at attention. You've been here before. Welcome home, detective. You're home now. What would be the repercussions if I take that sip? Nothing. Some mental stuff. Nothing to be worried about. Physically, you'll be as strong as an ox. Bloop. A golden sun. Wow, that was a lot of experience. A golden sun melts down your throat, its rays filling your nostrils with sunshine. Your stomach melts from it into a happy, gooey mess. So does your mind. All the bad things are melting. You're you again. A real cop. A real detective. Incredibly well done. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a drink button. It gives plus one to physique skills. This is good before rolling a white check, but damages your morale. And remember, from the void we came, and to the void we must return. Alright, let us remove that. What was I going to... Because it, it does seem like it would be fun to really, like, take something here and increase it a lot. So that so that I can count on seeing some of the more interesting role, things that pop up. Like, um... Rhetoric for convincing people? Lie and detect lies? Conceptualization does seem really cool. Inland Empire seemed like a really important one that I, I have seen so many things pop up that are Inland Empire. I don't know if they're necessarily roles or if they're just scripted parts where it's like, okay, here's Inland Empire sp speaking up. There's been a lot of reaction speed things too. What's what's something something interesting? Like encyclopedia isn't interesting. Like it pops up a lot, but I feel like a lot of the roles are easy, and a lot of the information is kind of like, yeah, well, yeah. I know that's that's basically it. I don't I don't know enough about the game to know like what's what's the really interesting <laughs> warrior of light or warrior of dark. Torn between between these two. Wait, why does this already have a four? Hmm. 
what is this? Now that I think about it, yeah, what, what is this number that's showing up at the bottom? Is that like how many? No, I don't know. How much you have and the diamonds are how many? Oh, because I have, because I'm wearing clothing. <laughs> That's what it is. My, my equipment is raising certain things and lowering certain things. I kind of want either one of one of these or maybe suggestion. Suggestion's also cool. No, we'll go with conceptualization. Can I talk to you? Sleeping dock worker. A man is sleeping at the table wearing mud caked boots and rolled down overalls. Back of his shirt reads, Wild Pines, encircled by a logo with a tree. A colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabiner. What is that? Makes your fingers itch. On the counter, rolled out of his hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Inspect the piece of plastic. It's a dock worker's ID, doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. From the photo, Santiago S. John. Uh, it would be nice to have pills, right? Magnesium. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. Exactly. Medicine. Yes. I could steal his ID. It would be very easy. I have super high interfacing. might need an ID later, but I don't really look like him. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a photo on it. That's not going to be useful. Maybe I'll steal it next time I play. Can I help you? <clears throat> Here's your trash container key. I hope you found what you were looking for. I found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Who else has keys to the trash container? The trash collection service? CS Municipal? I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, uh, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threads that solves itself down the road. Blind umpire, good evening to you. I, I can't do it if you Thank you for the host. If you just turn around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> can't do it if you're, if you're leering at me. It's creepy. He turns to the man. Thank you anyway. Could someone on your staff have put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. None of us would tamper with a crime scene. About that money I owe, how much do I owe you again? A lot. A lot, lot. For the room, drinks, and broken window, 130 real. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. Like what? I was really enjoying talking about the money you owe me. And is there something else I wanted to... No, nothing there. Alright. Is 
So what did he say? 100 and... 130? That's the other thing that I had to do. Go, uh, radio... Radio to ask them for money. Preheater gauge. That's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they're mesmerizing. They're also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. Connect me to the 41st. 10 4, come in. Firewalker. Over. This might sound odd, but there's personal detail. <laughs> Am I gonna get in trouble, like, asking him what is my name? Because <laughs> it's funny, like, there there are, there are, um... There, there definitely are, like, penalties that you get for going on certain tangents with people, where it's like, okay, now, now when you go to do this skill check, you can see that the, uh, that you have a penalty to it. Or a bonus. I am in dire need of financials. I'm not gonna, it's not as simple as I can just ask him, hey, what's my name? And he'll tell me. 10-4, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but what does he want now? He is asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. All right. Uh, the operator turns back to you. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. It, it, is, it is paramount to the investigation. Did you grant me more money? He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Request denied, sir. Over. Mm, I'm not gonna beg. Actually, that, that's true. I really don't have a place to sleep tonight. <laughs> and if I sleep in the street, I might have a heart attack. Yeah, it's dire enough. I don't, I don't have, I'm not going to be able to scrounge up 130 bucks. He says he's in trouble, doesn't have a place to sleep. Well, I guess you better crack the case before sundown, then. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go home. Please come and get me. No, I'm not going to say that. Okay, I heard you. No funds. Let's, let's talk about the personal details. Okay, 10-4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait! Before you say anything stupid, think it through. What is there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. I wanted to know if you got my badge's description right in your port. Could you read it to me? <laughs> Name, rank, date of birth. Looking for my address. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. News about my family. I told you about my life, but... Alright, let's... I know he's not alone in the room, though. This... This is probably the easiest way, right? I could say, please refer to me. <laughs> Have I ever played Divinity? Never. I don't know anything about it. There's two of them, right? There's a Divinity 2. I mean, Rhetoric... Rhetoric told me to be smart about this, so I'll, I'll ask if he's here. Because I feel like this option wouldn't be here. Unless... All right. It's a negative, sir. I got a 10-12 here. Over. Uh, any news about my family? 10... Uh, Excuse me, sir? Over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. Yeah, but Inland Empire has been wrong before. Inland Empire, I'm on to you. <laughs> That's the one that told me, like, don't open the clipboard, don't look at the thing, throw that card away. Just thought you might have heard of them, that's all. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed that things weren't good on that front. Over. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. 
Ten nine. Repeat message? I didn't get that, sir. Over. Stop calling me sir and just use my goddamn name, will you? Uh... What? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated. Oh no! I do seem intoxicated. I did have a drink. <laughs> and keeps asking me to call him by his name. <laughs> Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge his drunken antics. There's, there's no harm in saying get the badge's description right. Right? Name? Rank? I do want to know my rank. What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revicholian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. Alright, let's wrap this up. Um. Pay for damages. Hmm. 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 Things seem really bad. Although there's still a lot of places that I can go to, right? Some great tectonic force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. The damage looks like it could have been caused by an earthquake. <laughs> An ancient fountain. It doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Plastic wrapped macaroni stacked with humanitarian aid. Humanitarian aid tuna fish, not for resale. There are clothes inside. Cheap secondhand clothes smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics, best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. I was through the box. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester brand, br blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical but also trendy. Look first hand by second hand. Keep the economy moving. Something cold, great, this is your hand. Sleek, synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer. 100% waterproof and sport. All in different typefaces. Speakers from the people of Samara. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, face it where it's or looking at him, his face breaks in a wide, welcoming grin. The name C Lang is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer. Everything's cool here. What's so cool? Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer. You're very cool. It makes both hands into finger pistols. There's a few finger bullets into the air. <laughs> you feel a twitch in your index fingers. There's a finger shootout of Bruin. Composure, are you getting me in trouble? No, it's a safety hazard. What? No finger pistols, officer? <laughs> what do you think's going to happen when all those finger bullets come raining down to earth? The lieutenant nods approvingly. You're right, officer. One hundred percent. No playing around then. Strictly business. Maybe I can interest you in some premium menswear instead. Persuade him to give you some money. Maybe I'll be able to do that later. What kind of stuff you selling here? Only the coolest goods in Revachal. I got sneakers, speakers, extremely comfy pants, too. Try them on right here. No shame, only freedom. <laughs> 
Where'd you get those comfy pants? I'm an entrepreneur, officer. He begins counting on his fingers. I've got sources, buyers, suppliers, distributors, manufacturers, wholesalers, all extremely cool and above board. You have a permit? Good joke, officer. Here, we don't have permits, just economic freedom. Take a look around. He takes a deep breath. You glance around the decrepit buildings, the miserable weather, the sidewalks strewn with sunflower seeds and the dust-choked air. It's beautiful, beautiful pre freedom. True? He doesn't need a permit to sell? Yes, it is. Or it is, yes. Anyone can set up their shop whenever they feel like it. That's why the city and its law officials are so cool. What are we doing here if there are no permits? If you wanted to be cynical about it, you could say we're here to protect the interests of property holders. I'm not, however. My man, officer, you make all this possible. Without you, this climate would be extremely bad for business. You're part of the Gossamer State. So cool guys protect businessmen while everyone else lives in the ruins? I can, I can think of cooler things. Or a gossamer state. You're right, this is cool. I'm part of a hip, thin, almost non-existent state apparatus. Now let's guilt him. Yeah, cool ruins, he agrees. I get to sell quality goods like these by cutting out the middleman. You don't have to rebuild your house. Live in a crater or a tree. He points to a tree. Where can you do that? Only in here. Humanitarian aid. <laughs> you mean these delicious prepackaged shelf stable meal kits? Really easy to cook, no hassle, really cheap too. Buy some and try them out. Don't play games with me, Hawker. What's going on? No problem here, officer. I I get all this from one of my suppliers, an extremely reputable guy. And who is your supplier exactly? Oh, he's a good guy. I think you get along. I'll let you know the next time he's around. Interesting. We'll need even more if we're going to pin this one down. Oh, oh, he we're talking about Kim. We'll need more to we'll need more if we're going to pin this one down, he thinks. Good questions though. Sharp eyes, officer. Where are you from? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? It's all business now, all Revachal. You're not a local, are you? Very sharp. I'm from Ceres, from the Sige province of the Ceres Empire. The apricot suzerain tea, you know? Apricots are delicious. The apricot suzerain tea, the lieutenant explains, is what the Sige archipelago is known as in Revachal. It's a bit of a fraught term, I'm sure you understand. No, no. Apric apricots come from Sige, the vendor explains. My grandmother used to grow them, but Sige is a shithole. That's why I came to Rivachal. Here is much better for an in independent entrepreneur. Less laws. <laughs> Speaking of which, why not do give my money? <laughs> I send half my profits back to my grandma in Sige. Oh, what a nice guy. <laughs> Food gift from the people of Messinia. Helpline to the company that controls the drop. Oh, there's a drawbridge here. Okay. And what is this on the ground? Box of sunglasses. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. Takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Abort! These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer, you look like a mega secret spy. Very secret, the man nods eagerly. Practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. It's going to be very difficult <laughs> for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No. The lieutenant gently removes the glasses from your face, setting you free again. You're definitely not buying those. You're right. I'm too sensible for those. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Shades of self-destruction. Plus electrochemistry. Minus logic. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap cerise plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Those UV stickers are almost certainly there for show. If anything, <laughs> these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. Thank you, drama. Is conceptualization? Yeah, that's the one that. Well, that's the one that I'm kind of working on. Or I kind of. Mm, it's just sunglasses, so sure. Ah, I see a pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says "sub insulindic rendezvous." The frame appears to be hand carved out of bone. A oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. For the first time, the street vendor's voice trails off as he watches you inspect the glasses. This is how a sea monster <laughs> sees the world. You've become a sea monster. Giant, hidden, and strangely tender at heart. All is blue. Alright, but these make your vision worse. It's, like, literally being underwater. Yes, but they also make your soul quiver like jello. So deep. Wow, officer, you look so cool! He's picked up his pace again as you observe the world through deep, sea-tinted lenses. And these can be yours for a mere three real. My regular ca customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste. But you found them. And what about these? Lieutenant tilts his head, stepped back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician, he declares, eyes still squinted behind his own glasses. Like a blind musician. But you could do worse. Take them, if you want. <laughs> if only I had money. Isn't there some way to get money? I know if I find a plastic bag, I can go around, like, picking up trash <laughs> and getting ten cents for it. Oh, a Nosefed. Nice. I guess, yeah. Garbage. Fingerless gloves. I don't need the interfacing bonus. I would rather have fingerless gloves. Gasoline-stained fingerless gloves in navy blue. They've been worn threadbare, but being made of wool still provides some warmth and comfort. <laughs> Disco! Sure is. How are you doing, Nogia? Water lock out of order until Wednesday, 7.15 a.m. You there, you got a permit to stand around? Man on water lock. Good day to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. <laughs> what are you doing here, man? Man on the water lock? My friend Barry the Butcher, stuck on the other side of the water lock. I'm keeping him company and eating his salami. Work is really crazy, but you're doing okay. I'm glad you're okay. Hopefully work will calm down. From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and gray overalls waving at you from across the canal. He seems disappointed about the wreckage on the water lock and the salami. The man on the water lock picks the skin off a slice of salami and takes a sizable bite. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer? Do you know what caused this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but those, looks like, those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivetrol. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Inland Empire likes to pipe up a lot whenever something comes up about driving. Or no, maybe, maybe it's interfacing that does that too. 
Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Can I have some of that salami? Sure. I've healed my health, but didn't help. It is salty. It is savory. It is chewy. The hangover only makes the salami more tasty. You want some too, officer? Lieutenant ponders for a moment and decides to go for it. Why not? He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. What's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seemed to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not much else. Just bound out ruins. All right. Bye. Waterlock control panel. A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal, but there's a crashed Samaran butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Hmm. Butter sign down. A crumpled billboard reading Samaran Butter. Samar, Samar E-N Butter with an I? Soaks in the canal. Two ugly lines mar the bright countenance of the blonde boy depicted. The sign billboard has fallen on the water lock, keeping it open and thus out of order. What is Samaran Butter? Whatever it is, the boy on the billboard seems very happy about it. Visual. Ominous daredevil feeling has given me a plus one. <laughs> Uh, can I raise my visual calculus even more before making this roll? No. Apparently not. Judging by the size of the impact and the parallel lines of the burnt rubber, the cause was probably a motor vehicle. These look like the same tire tracks I saw earlier in front of the whirling and rags. Oh. The black marks on the roof indicate that the vehicle vaulted from the crater to the roof of the shack. Side slip marks indicate that the vehicle is traveling up the crater at 35 kilometers per hour. The panel served as a takeoff ramp. The vehicle soared through the air, hitting the billboard and upsetting the post. Then it continued its flight, taking the billboard with it. The sign broke the vehicle's fall into the canal. Good, good conceptualization. I like it. The Samaran Billbutter... Samaran Butter Billboard. Not Bill Butter. That's not a thing. Still looks freshly painted, suggesting it took the plunge recently. How recently? Within the past 72 hours. Look at the opposite bank. Still speeding, the vehicle made a loop and crashed into... Vanished into the fog along the coast. What was the model of this phantom vehicle? There are two good candidates, candidates, the Cupri 40 and the Linea G6, G22. It's about the right size, and the tire marks look like they came from the skinny tires frequently found on that motor carriage. Very sturdy, but light motor carriage. More, than li more, more likely than most to survive that jump. What now? Now you'd have to follow the tracks to be sure. Well, that was neat. Oh, he has something to talk about. Is that why that's there? Any theories about what happened here? Someone's in a real hurry. <laughs> Top shelf shenanigans. I want to meet the driver and shake his hand. What kind of car? I could take a guess. 
I think it's Kupri. He seems impressed. That's quite likely from what I can tell. I don't know who it could have been, though, do I? No, I don't. No, I'll take the task. Find the traffic hooligan. I'm not expecting him to get far with this. Lose time he consoles himself. Hmm. Roy's Pawn Shop. 